during the feminine movement class Koya or during one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching with women I often speak about embodiment and uh, so there is official definition of embodiment and embodiment for me through my own lived experience is when I can take in and respond to the reality, meaning what is in front of me, still stay, staying in my center, which means I don't need to disassociate, to numb myself out, to bypass, to ignore that completely as if nothing is happening, to you know crawl out of my own skin, just disappear from the situation or conversation or person. Neither do I need to feel helpless, completely hopeless and victimized when I, you know, just resign and, and collapse, basically, that's it. And sure enough, it's, you know, easier said uh, than, than done, but I see it as a process in day-to-day -day life and in, 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 daily, in daily routines. So. And that's why knowing and educating myself about our nervous system state was crucial on this path of embodiment and I consider it to be path even though we believe that we live in our bodies as if it's a given fact I'm sitting in front of you you are sitting in front of me the opposite side of the camera of the screen nonetheless the majority of our life happens here and I think you would agree with me so thinking about the past worrying, feeling guilty, ashamed, fearful, thinking only about the future, daydreaming, envisioning, or feeling very concerned on the other hand. And kind of what is happening right now in front of me, I, as if I don't, I don't see that. And this is a big part of being in the state, nervous system state, under threat, under stress, in other words. So I will mention for you um, emotional signs, meaning the emotions that we feel when our nervous system feels under stress. And that can be real stress, that we have a really stressful situation, or it can be perceived stress, which means that we remember some past event. event. And as you know, our body nor our brain doesn't understand if the event, stressful event that we are now replaying and remembering, whether that is happening right now or it happened in the past. So each time when we, we regurgitate and we remember the same and the same bad negative event or conversation or person that has happened, our body and mind literally physically, biochemically react to that situation as if it is happening now. It's, it's just insane. So emotional signs that direct kind of our attention and focus that our body and mind feels under stress at the moment or under threat. So I will mention those. So when we feel just a bit under stress or under threat, there is a state uh, that can be called the state of fitting in. So we can feel lonely, isolated, and now very popular imposter syndrome, so-called. So we might feel imposters in some group of people. Then it's another piece which is fawning. And fawning means that we are very nice, we are very pleasing, we are very appeasing and accommodating. So. Even inside our body, inside our mind, we feel really uncomfortable, let's say in some conversation or group of people, yet we are so nice externally and so pleasing. So this fawning effect when our nervous system is under, under stress, meaning that we, 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 we default to that state. If the stress is a bit higher than that, or at least perceived stress, so our nervous system feels it a bit higher, we, we go into the fight or flight sympathetic nervous system state. So fight is when we feel and the emotions that can direct that we are in this fight mode is irritation, frustration, 
anger, uh, rage, and then annihilation. It's like big explosion. Flight or flee sympathetic state is when we feel worry, concern, anxiety, fear, panic, terror. And you can notice that this is a bit of escalation of those labeled emotions, right? So from worry, concern to the terror, or from, let's say, a bit of irritation or impatience, we go up to rage and, and you know, and kind of destructive pattern of being. And another state of uh, our nervous system is the oldest in mammals, which is called uh, dorsal parasympathetic, dorsal meaning back, and it is freeze. So when our nervous system defaults to that state of being, meaning the threat and the stress that our body mind notices, it's a very high level, right? It's very high stress. So we feel confusion, we feel disorientation, like we lose space and time, we don't understand like what is happening, where is happening. We can feel that in the positive note, or not positive, but when we are not under stress, right? When we are playing, when we are open, when we are curious, we can also uh, kind of have a bit of disorientation because everything becomes here and now. But this is particular state under stress. So then it goes to um, numbing, when we literally just numb out any sensations or feelings or emotions and we're just like zero neutral or whatever. Uh, then we might feel uh, um, resignation, helplessness, and at the end of, of, of the ladder, if you will, it's collapse. So it's not that, you know, we move from this to that. It depends very, very specifically and individually on the wiring of our nervous system, of mine, of yours. So we can go from a bit of a stress to collapse, a bit of a stress to rage, a bit of a stress to complete helplessness, right? And some people will will uh, flow more in between, let's say, irritation and possibly a bit of anger, but then like it's, it's, it's uh, de-escalates. It's very individual. And that is hardwired or wired rather in ourselves because we can change that. It's not easy, but we can change that in preconception, in mother's uterus, in the childhood and growing up into adulthood. So those nervous system states is autonomic nervous system states. Autonomic meaning that the part of our nervous system that regulates autonomic functions of our body. So breathing, you don't need to think that my lungs now expand or contract or, or move in some way when I breathe in and breathe out. You don't need to think for yourself, okay, let's now breathe in now and let's now breathe out. So autonomic nervous system does all those life functions of our body for us. This is very unconscious, right? Then digestion, then uh, all intestinal work and uh, um, blood flow and uh, heartbeat, uh, all of this is governed by this autonomic nervous system, as well as the states with emotions and sensations that I just mentioned. So even though sometimes, and especially if you recognized yourself, where you might stand in those emotional signs when you feel under threat or you feel uncomfortable, we don't need to put those labels onto ourselves. Let's say that, oh, I'm always in freeze or I'm always in flight or I'm always, just taking it as a general uh, pointers towards where our nervous system uh, usually defaults during day-to-day -day, uh, jobs and duties and, and funds that we have. Because usually during the day, our nervous system cycles like a wave during all those states, right? Fight, flee, and, 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 and the sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, phases of our nervous system when we don't feel and perceive the real threat, so which is rest and digest, regenerate, uh, 
uh, be active, which means wake up, breathe, uh, um, you know, enjoy your hobby, enjoy your job, or have conversations with people. This is a very sympathetic state, play, but sympathetic state when it's, we, we don't feel under threat, right? So we cycle, we wave during the day. Nonetheless, there are very few people who has this so-called regulated or fluid transition during the day. The majority, majority of us uh, usually default more into one or other state of being. So say I might default to fight and freeze more. You might default to flee, basically when the body wants to run away, to shut the door, to escape the situation versus go forward for the fight, whatever it might mean, or freeze, which means collapsing and staying here, but like numb and diso dissociated that I don't understand anything. So it's interesting to notice, at least for me, it was very, very useful to start observing which is my home for my nervous system, basically where my nervous system rests in. And I was surprised because nervous system states under threat when we have them for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Those states become normality for us. So we sometimes don't even notice that we have a clenched jaw during the day or very contracted pelvis, especially for women during the day. And that's a sympathetic, which means under threat, right? Why is it important? And so this embodiment is about being in your center without getting stuck in any of the nervous system states under threat for a prolonged period of time. So that is embodiment. And this we can cultivate is process, is skill. It's not easy. But that's kind of a part of life and being alive, I guess. So when we go into the freeze and we do, when we go into the fight and we do, when we go into the flight or fawning or fitting in, we don't stay there for months or years on end because that's very taxing on our body. That's why burned out, fatigue, it's not necessarily the situation that is happening is our nervous system reaction to what is happening. And you notice most probably that some people when they are in traffic or some people when they are in a queue in the grocery shop, some people go nuts. Literally, they go nuts. They explode. They become so angry and so rageful. Others, meanwhile, might be a bit impatient and irritated but it's not a big deal some might even not notice that right so it's exactly the same event the same situation and completely different responses and reactions to it and this is very very unconscious so it's not that now i decided that i will be rageful in the traffic my nervous system because it feels it wired that and it feels by scanning my environment external and internal that there is the threat. So the traffic, my nervous system perceives as a threat to my system. And then it goes in nanosecond, it just whew, overtakes me, this anger or impatience or frustration. And we don't notice that actually we function in that state because it became a normality. We even say that, oh, it's his character, he is just like that, or she is just like that. Why it's important, I think, for me personally, to be curious about your default nervous system, where do you stay majority of your life, is now we have this huge talk about exercising, food, um, you know, alternative healing modalities, about uh, sleep, um, diets and so on and so forth right so we do keto so we do the heat training so we do intermittent fasting so we do all the hygiene for sleep and we take supplements 
which is very, very perfect. But as my teacher said, who was studying nervous system deeply, that it was noticed already hundreds of years ago. And I guess indigenous people knew that for thousands of years. If your state of your body mind daily is in the sympathetic nervous system state under the threat, whatever you put in your body, it will be just like the band-aids. When you have a wound and you just put the band-aid on it. But it doesn't address, address the cause of why this thing is happening in your body. Because you want it or not, autonomic nervous system overrides all the conscious willingness to eat healthier, or do this and that. And that's why now it's all also clear that affirmations, when you just speak them cognitively, let's say you in front of the mirror, you just say, I am enough, I am loved, I am abundant, I am healthy, whatever it is. And it is a beautiful thing to do, don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful thing to do. Nonetheless, if you say that only with your, you know, prefrontal lobe, very conscious, but your unconscious mind and your body thinks completely different thing, perceives your environment externally and, and internally as unsafe, and you are all the time in this a bit sweaty or anxious or non-affirmation will override the nervous system because the nervous system is here to keep us alive. And nothing is more stronger in our living form than the need to survive. So our unconscious nervous system will always choose to be more sympathetic or more on the lookout versus taking in the affirmations that we're just speaking to ourselves daily. I guess when we combine both, so when we are very curious about our body and this embodiment, this centeredness, and we add affirmations, then it can be a very balanced, beautiful, dance uh, or we, we add uh, breath work or we add uh, uh, dance or we add uh, yoga or we add uh, gym whatever it is right so uh, good food or or this or that then then it becomes the thing that uh, might give some beautiful beautiful um, doors and opening more deeper into ourselves I hope it was interesting for you and I hope that some things or some thoughts you found relevant to yourself. If so, I would be very happy to hear in the comments and um, if you want us to have a conversation further about the nervous system states, we can do that, let me know.